A lot of you probably have the exact same problem as Trav for Oilers, and that is the fact that you are too darn slow to play at the next level. By the end of this video, you will see exactly the training mistakes that Trav's making. You probably are making some of the same ones as well. I will tell you how to fix them so you can start beating the pass on your feet rather than sabotaging your speed. So I built a career helping goalies from minor league to the NHL to beer leaguers unlock their speed on the ice so they can finally play with more patience. And it's not entirely Trav's fault that he is slow. Although we did have a discussion a couple years ago about his training and how it was not really making him faster. Yeah, it's a, like a good general strength training program. So if, if I'm somebody who's just starting out at the gym, it would probably be fine. For a goalie, yeah, this isn't what you need as a goalie. But anyway, <laughs> he just doesn't know. He doesn't know exactly what to do and a lot of you are probably in the same boat. If we have not met before, I'm Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I am an exercise physiologist who specializes in off-ice training for goalies. What does that mean? Well, it means that uh, I did an undergraduate degree in physical education, as it used to be called back in the day. <laughs> that took four years. Uh, then I did spend two years doing a master's of science. Actually, uh, I also worked for five years as the exercise specialist in a world-renowned sport medicine clinic and I've been a practicing strength coach for over 25 years so I've had a lot of time to figure out what does and doesn't work. If you are new to Goalie Training Pro TV then now is the time to hit subscribe so that you never miss the simple and advanced strategies that help you stop more pucks with fewer injuries so you're getting noticed for all the right reasons by all the right people. And before any of you get mad at me for throwing shade on Trav saying he's super slow, it isn't coming from me. He said it in his video, you can go check out, I think it's the January 3rd video. He's talking about how he's too slow to play at the level he's trying to play at. So I'm giving some constructive feedback because I see loads and loads of goalies making the same mistakes that he's making. I think we better head down to the lab now and I'll take you through it step by step so you can see the mistakes and see how to fix it. Here's where Trav and probably a lot of you can make some really simple changes. So when we look at the January 3rd video, Trav outlines or he kind of, he shows his workout and he, and he puts sort of what the plan is. So uh, I jotted it down here. So it's two times 20 reps of glute bridges. Uh, he says med ball glute bridges, but I think he means stability. He's on a, his shoulders are on a stability ball and he's doing glute bridges. So that is working the glutes, which are a really powerful hip extensor. It's a good posterior chain exercise, but it's high volume. So he's training stamina, not really max strength, which is the element that feeds into power. So uh, again, and I don't know his strength coach uh, who designs his programs. Maybe he's in a, like, yeah, like a movement phase or a base phase or somewhere where they're really trying to, to build that stamina. But uh, if we want to build speed, we need to build big strength. Then it goes on to two sets of 10 side plank. Uh, he calls them extensions. They're really like abductions. Would it be easier if I kind of showed you what these exercises are? Because I feel like you won't know what they are, actually are. I'm going to show you what they are as we go through. Going to need to adjust the angle a little. So the first exercise I was talking about is a, was a glute bridge uh, off a stability ball. So it's basically your shoulders are on the stability ball, you drop your hips, come back up. It's a nice exercise for your glutes, hamstrings, spinal erectors. So nice, uh, she's doing two sets of 20, so again, really building that muscular stamina. The next one was list, listed as side plank extension. It's actually side plank abduction. This is abduction. But again, even if you watch the video, he kind of brings his foot a little forward, turns his toes out. So instead of getting that lateral hip, we're trying to get, and this is a really common mistake because your hip flexors or even your anterior portion of your TFL is, is going to give you more range of motion. So if you do this exercise and you're getting much higher than that, 
you're probably cheating a little bit. But anyway, so again, good core stabilization exercise and then adding in a little bit of hip work. The next one he lists is groin abduction. It's actually adduction. So squeezing your knees together is adduction. Pulling your legs apart is abduction. So it's just squeezing here, relax, squeezing, relax. I think it was two sets of 20 like that. So again, it's a muscular endurance exercise. It's working these, your groin muscles, but also kind of in a relatively narrow, very static way. So maybe not quite as functional as we look for. Then I really like this next one. He calls it a double leg snap down. I call it triple flexion, but uh, it's starting from here and then it's hammering down. So it's a deceleration drill. Deceleration is a really key ingredient to actually speed training, which seems counterintuitive, but you, you almost need to stop before you can go. So it's here and then the key is to get triple flexion at your hips, knees and ankles and to really aggressively hammer that down. So it can't be slow, it can't kind of be inhibited. You're gonna start here and then as hard and as fast as you can, you're gonna hammer down. Notice how my butt sits back, my knees bend, I hammer here. When you watch Trab do it, he's, he's trying to do the right thing and he should, probably when he watches the video, he also notices what he does. But he gets here, so his knees only bend really about this much, and he flexes forward at his hips, which again, it isn't building the power. You know, if I look at, okay, here's where I'm trying to build power, or here's where he's, he's sort of trying to build power, well, you know, <laughs> I don't get much power out of that. If I'm, here's where I'm building power, you know, you can see, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's a little bit more functional. Then he goes into the single leg version, which again, it magnifies that hip pattern. There's even less flex of the knee and more folding forward at the hips, probably because he doesn't have the dynamic control. I know that he's, he's talked about, you know, having a sore knee, having a sore hips. And probably part of that is, you know, not having this, taking the time to sort of build that pattern and control. So there's another issue is even some of the good exercises just need a little bit of coaching so that they're being executed properly. Then he goes into like a barbell Romanian deadlift. So just with the straight bar coming from here, boom, straight up. So another hip hinge exercise. So there's a ton of post, you know, quite a bit of posterior chain in here. There's a the glute bridge, the way he's doing, those snap downs, those are hip hinge as well, so posterior chain as well, and then the RDL. Other thing about the RDL is he's doing it bilaterally. You'll get so much more bang for your buck if you do a Romanian deadlift or like a stiff legged deadlift with a single leg. And we usually use dumbbells, but you can use a barbell if you really want to. And then you go through a single leg pattern because let me show you from the side because here I have to build a lot more stability in my hip. I'm also learning that pattern of getting pelvis on femur rotation. So way more bang for your buck as a goalie, almost as any athlete really, but if you do a single leg Romanian deadlift versus bilateral. So I like single leg, stiff legged deadlift because it starts to teach us, okay, how do I rotate my pelvis on my femur. Do you want to bend in this knee or no? It can be softly bent. And then the last one he does is, uh, uh, he calls a box step up. So he's using just a stack of three plates. So, you know, it's probably about an eight inch step up and he's holding, looks like maybe a 20 pound dumbbell and he's kind of, you know, he's kind of stepping up. But when you're only stepping up this high, you know, think of your position on the ice when you're driving, when you need speed. Like you need a little more knee bend than that. You need power, especially if you're coming out of your butterfly, you need a lot more knee flexion, hip flexion. You need power deeper in that range. Now he said their plyo box is broken or something. So he has to, he had to, you know, rig that up. Probably 
if the plyo box wasn't broken, you know, he'd be doing it off a little bit of a taller box. He didn't include the tempos for each exercise in the video, so I don't know what his strength coach programmed, but in the video, he's doing it at a pretty good, you know, pretty good pace. So my assumption is that, that that's what, how it's been programmed and that really the goal is to try to build power. Sometimes we do a box step up, even a low box step up, a little slower to try and teach, you know, control, stability, build some strength through that full range of motion. But the fact that it's being done at a higher tempo tells me that they're trying to train power. So especially on a, such a low box, that's a case where he might want to add more weight, not crazy amounts of weight, but a little more weight so there's something more to push against. But you want to get loaded and then drive up all the way through. Again, the reps on that I think was eight repetitions on each side. Probably a little bit high volume for building power, but not a bad exercise. So I'm interested actually to know, because I still get messages from lots of goalies that um, who will say something like, and don't worry, I don't lift heavy weights, or don't worry, I only do body weight training because I know that I shouldn't lift heavy. I'm interested to know how many of you think that you shouldn't lift heavy or that you should only do body weight or that you should only do high repetition. So just drop a comment below. Again, not to like judge you and not to be like, well, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, but just so I know like, okay, who's, you know, who's in this tribe? Who's coming here to get some information? So just drop a comment or maybe you used to think that and then you changed and share your experiences. So really from the workout, what we see is there isn't a whole lot of emphasis on not much quad dominant work. Um, there, and then some of the hip extension work is very high volume. So if we want to build speed, we need to maximize our force production capacity. And I've talked about this in tons of other videos about speed training, but we need to increase force production capacity. And the way we do that is by lifting heavy, but we also need to build that functional strength. So we want to move away from some of the bilateral exercises into some more single leg exercises that require a bit more stability. I'd also love to see something in the frontal plane. Uh, really all of it is still in this sagittal plane when, you know, where goalies bread and butter is kept is in the frontal plane. Then, then things go really bad. <laughs> So, you know, and it's, and it is hard. Like, you know, I probably see stuff on Instagram about, you know, goal te on ice technique or something that, that isn't exactly right, but it kind of looks cool and it sort of makes sense. And this guy did it. So maybe I should try it, you know, and it, and it's not the right thing. So it's, again, it's not Trav's fault. He's, I think he saw this on online or something, someone using a weight vest and he thought that's what I need to do, you know, to get more speed. So he has a guy tape a five pound plate to his front and back. So like 10 out of 10 for like ingenuity and like finding a way to get it done. Like no weight vest, no problem. I'm going to tape these weights to me. He says he has a five kilogram plate on the front, five kilogram plate on the back. And he's like, oh, so I think it's about 15 pounds. It's actually 22 pounds, <laughs> over 22 pounds. So that's a lot of load on your body. So he straps on that weight, talks about, you know, now I'm gonna go out and push the pace and um, get some quick feet, which some strength coaches will go nuts to hear the term quick feet. Cause like river dance, you know, is quick feet, but it doesn't really get you where you wanna go and build some speed because apparently he is as slow as a hot dog out there, <laughs> which, which does not sound good. Not one little bit. Hey Goalie Nation, today I am gonna tell you why training with a weight vest is a bad idea. How it can make you dead slow, cause damage to your hips, knees, and ankles, not cool. Then he goes out on the ice and tweaks his groin or his knee or something or other that is a potentially season ending injury apparently. So not cool, but not unexpected. And this is probably one of the most frustrating things about my job. <laughs> uh, it's that, you know, goalies want to play at a high level. A lot of you want to play at a very high level, but you, instead of just following a proven system, 
that's going to help you develop the qualities you need, you try to do this patchwork together and you end up doing yourself more harm than good. And I find that really frustrating because my mission is to help you guys not do that. When we talk about speed, I want you to think about speed as a skill, but you need some essential qualities before you can start building pure speed. The number one quality we all need before we really undertake any specific training is, can I move? Can this goalie move the way a goalie needs to move? Can this goalie move at their hips? You know, maybe Trav does that weird, although it's weird because he uses his hips, not his knees. So it doesn't really suggest that the reason he folds forward at his, at his hips isn't really due to a hip dysfunction because he's actually, his default pattern is to overuse his hips. But for whatever reason, he, he doesn't use his knee. And we kind of noticed a similar thing when I met with him a couple years ago. So maybe there's a knee dysfunction that then he needs to get some physical therapy to, to, you know, recover that range of motion. So the first thing is, can this goalie move? Can this goalie stabilize? Uh, once we can do that, once you can move and stabilize, because your body won't really let you express the force that it can't stabilize. So you can be as strong as you are, you're doing leg presses and things like that, get really, really strong. But unless you have this stability element, you're not going to be able to use that force production capacity functionally. So can we stabilize? Then we start building functional strength. So speed is a function of power. Power is the rate of force development. So force times distance divided by time would be the mathematical equation. The time element is sort of how fast I can fire those muscles, how fast I can interpret data, fire those muscles. That is, that can be improved for sure, but it's also somewhat limited based on our fiber type. So some of us are more fast twitch, some of us are slower twitch. And so, you know, they're not completely limited, but they're a little bit <laughs> limited. They're harder to change. The easiest part of this equation to change is how much force I can produce. So if I, if I don't get any quicker, let's say, which is a terrible term to use, but let's say I don't get any quicker interpreting the data and firing my muscles, if I can produce more force in the same amount of time, I've increased my power. So I need to make myself stronger, but I need to make myself functionally stronger the way that a goalie needs it so that yes top down strength is great like you get with squats and split squats and romanian deadlifts and rear foot elevated split squats and all that stuff but you also need bottom up strength which is the kind of strength that you need coming out of a butterfly and again i've talked about bottom up strength lots of times in other videos I need the single leg strength so that I'm building that stability as well. Because when we're moving on the ice, very rarely are we using two legs at a time. Maybe to jump over a guy that's crashing the net, you know. Uh, but most of the time we're driving off of one leg, having to decelerate, stabilize, get ready for our next movement. We also need that frontal plane functional strength. So sagittal plane is like when we're walking or when we're squatting, it's this way. Frontal plane is moving side to side. Oh, does that look familiar? Yes, that's exactly what you do most of the time as a goalie. So we need that strength built in. One thing Trav talked about that really kind of perked my ears up as he strapped those weight plates to him was that I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna push the pace and, and he was, he was giving her, you know, like the guy, the guy's trying, like working hard, right? Um, the thing is though, speed can't be built with fatigue. Once we are adding fatigue, now we're training stamina. We're not training speed. So make sure that you're training what you think you're training. So it's got to be high quality. It's got to be high force. It's got to be high intensity. So when we do power training or speed training, the, the bursts are very, very short. Like even 10 seconds would be a long burst. You know, it might be two to four repetitions. If we were just doing like straight, say in the gym, we were doing dumbbell squat jumps, we might do six maybe, you know, so it's very short, very high intensity with lots and lots and lots of recovery. When you've topped out your speed skill, so I think for Trav, that would mean, you know, moving with good functional range of motion, executing with quality, executing with 
with good speed and explosiveness, then you could consider adding a little bit of overload. I'm not the biggest fan of adding overload on the ice for kind of the reasons that happened in the video. It changes your base of support. It throws off your balance and your stability a little bit. It actually does make you vulnerable for injuries like this. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure there is a time and a place, but I'm not a huge fan of it. And I give you a video here <laughs> where I go over sort of how you can use a weight vest to enhance your speed training. If you just scroll to the end and you're like, just what's the thesis? The thesis of the video is one of the best ways to get faster on the ice is to stop doing the things that make you slower. So that's number one. Number two is good training is good training. So if you have a good comprehensive training program, it delivers your mobility, your stability, your functional strength, your speed, your stamina. It's everything that you need. Now, if you're just getting into goalie specific training, maybe you go to the gym and, and kind of do, so like you kind of looked at Trav's workout, we're like, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> you know, When you're looking to get into some goalie specific training or just to try it out, you know, you're not sure. You're like, oh, I don't know, it looks too easy or something. Uh, I've got nine different pretty quick workouts you can do at home uh, in this playlist. So click here, you can check those out, take them for a test drive. Yeah, there's like nine different workouts. Some are for mobility, some are strength, some are speed, some are stamina. You get the idea. And if you're like Trav and you're trying to play at that next level or find what the highest level you're actually capable of playing at is and you want more advanced programs, you just want, Maria, I want you to design the programs. I want you to help me along the way. Then check out the link in the description that says something like, see if you qualify to work with me or something like that. I should say, see if we qualify to work together because that's really what it's about. And now is the time in the video where I ask you, I beg you, I plead of you to help me achieve my mission of helping any goalie anywhere in the world stop more pucks with fewer injuries. And the way you can do that is by simply hitting the like button. Some people say to smash it, but I've tried it. You can smash it or you can just hit it or lightly click on it and it works either way. So do whatever suits you. Uh, but that helps this video get shown to more motivated goalies like you. Helps spread the message as it were. Uh, so. I appreciate you, and I will see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel.